Oh, hey there. Sorry, I didn't notice you. Wait, are you still there? Oh, hey, okay, cool. Yeah, we should probably do a video. Some of the updates for ghosts and blueprints are absolutely mind-blowing. I cannot stress enough that this is a video you want to watch because frankly, a lot of these things should have been this way the whole time. Like for example, let's say I have a blueprint here of an assembling machine. I might like to change the recipe of it. Okay. Hey look, I can do that. Oh, it seems this ghost has a recipe. Can I do that with everything? Why, yes I can. I can set requests on ghost requester chests. I can connect ghosts via ghostly cable. You might call it ethereal net cable. In map view, you can click on it and put modules there. Also, if you're wondering how I just picked this, you can literally use the pipette tool on just about everything now. In this particular instance, I just used it on this item, but literally you can pipette anything. For example, you can pipette the ground. Everything that you're seeing here and more, I pretty much just made a tapestry of stuff, you can configure from ghosts. It's, it's just perfect. Anything you can configure with a regular entity, you can pretty much do with the ghosts. This is amazing. Also, as another fun little bonus tip, you'll notice that when there are no filters set, you get this little icon telling you that it's filtering basically well, everything. If you set it to blacklist, then it's letting everything through. So just in case you ever need those. A pretty big change is that you can now mine landfill. So if I place a whole bunch, I can pick it back up. Oh wait, how? Well, you can pipette it. If I hit Q, you'll notice it picks up the landfill on the cursor like it was concrete or something. And then I can simply hold right click. Yeah, okay, this is gonna take you a minute if you do this. But hey, guess what, bots. You'll also notice it didn't take this away. That's because I was standing way too near it. If I try to get rid of all this, well, you'll notice it's not going to take away the landfill that's right under my feet, because otherwise you end up in the drink. And though this may not have happened to you, it is possible for a mod to put you in the water. And if that happens, you die. Fun fact, you can actually soft lock yourself like this, but you do have to kind of try hard to do so. You'd have to have a gun that you can shoot a box into which you put all of the resources you would use to get back off of this island, but uh, you're really trying at that point. I'm sure someone's going to do it though. The next little detail is best shown with an example. I'm going to paste a giant blueprint. That was a little hard to see. Let's try that again. Ah, there it goes. As you can see, there is a lighter cyan. That's the color the ghost turns when a bot actually gets assigned something that can actually fulfill it. I said the word actually twice in that sentence. That's just great. The next detail is pretty super. It's called Super Force Building. To see what it does, let's copy this. And what we're gonna do is try to paste this in various places and see what happens. If I try to put this over the trees, it's not going to work because it's intersecting the trees and that's not going to let it build. Also, as a side note, you can see the little red boxes there that are telling you that there is something there, meaning you can't build the entity in that spot and the whole entity turns red. Anyways, if I click, it's gonna say, nope, there's stuff in the way. If I hold shift and click, which is called regular force building, you can see all the trees that are intersecting something are given a red outline, which means when I click, they'll get marked for deletion and it'll build the stuff. There you go, go ahead and pick this back up. Hey, wait a minute, I didn't put the trees back. Literally unplayable. Now, you can also do regular force building on the water. So if I try to paste it here again, it's not going to work, but if I hold shift, not only will it paste it, it'll put down the required landfill first. And when you undo it, so satisfying. Okay, so that's the updates to force building, but what is super force building? Well, first let's go ahead and try to paste. Let's say I wanted to move this one tile over. It's not gonna let me do it. And if I hold shift, uh, it's pretty much gonna fail too. Like it'll find some spots where there's belt that can fit, but it's not gonna work too well. What I can do now is hold shift and control and I get super force building. If you look at the cursor, you can actually see the little angry ghost. But what you might see is that it's going to mark things that are in its way for deconstruction. Now, if I click, this one little bot would like it very much if I moved. All right, very well.
Anyways, as you can see, it moved it over. But there are some things to note. First off, if it wasn't in the way, like this belt here, and here, and here, and here, it'll leave it there. Second off, it will also try to build undergrounds around something you've built. So this isn't perfect, and you could get some unintended behaviors, but nonetheless, this is a great way to move things over one stupid tile. If I was a superhero, this sort of problem would be my kryptonite. As a good example of this, say I've got a bunch of belt, and for some reason, I want to put a storage tank in the middle of it. If I hold shift, it doesn't work. If I hold control shift, it works, and it runs undergrounds around it. If I try this with pipe, though, it'll put it there, but it won't actually connect the pipes with undergrounds. So it's not perfect, but it does do a good job with belts at least. Another fun detail is that you can make blueprints out of Spidertrons now. If I look at this Spidertron, it has an equipment grid, and it's got some stuff in it. I can press Alt-B, which is the blueprint shortcut, and it'll give me this. And of course, I can create the blueprint here, and if I place it, not only is this thing created, but its equipment grid is filled out. This also works for vehicles. We've got a tank, it's got 25 fuel in it and some bullets, and a car, 25 fuel and some bullets. If I hit Alt-B, take a blueprint, you'll notice it only includes the fuel and the actual vehicles themselves and not the bullets. You can also see it's setting a request here for the individual item. That's what this little icon here means. I can hit Create Blueprint, place it, and it'll wait for fuel to show up. If you want to give it ammo, you still can. Just go into map view, zoom in, click on it, and bring in the ammo you want. It'll make a request, and it'll do the thing. Only difference is, this is not part of the blueprint. One fun little detail, you can actually set requests for equipment grids. Let's say I have my own armor, and I have a slot here where I'd like to put some exoskeleton legs. Currently, I have one in my inventory, but let's say I didn't. I just pick one up, I hold shift, and that'll put down a ghost version of it. I can then click here, and now I have this ghost version. This is actually a request that will be fulfilled if I'm in a network that can do so. So right now I have a robo port. I've got a storage chest. If I put the leg in here, let me actually move this to the side so you can see what happens. Huh, why didn't that work? That's because this isn't a Logibot request. This is actually something that needs to be done with construction bots. That's right, if I look at my robo port here, I have logistics robots, but what I can do here is put some construction robots in, and now, I, and now if I look at my armor, there it is. Here's a fantastic feature I'll just show you in action. Let's take a blueprint of this. Let's include the tiles. No particular reason, just because they're awesome. Let's say we wanted to have a requester chest that essentially just requested exactly what was in this blueprint. In order to do this, we just make a chest. We click on it, pick up the blueprint, and click on add section. And there you go. Wait a second. Was that wooden chest in there the whole time? This next feature requires a bit of an explanation, but it is very powerful. It's called parameterization. The idea is you can take a blueprint and take numbers or recipes inside that blueprint and make them into variables that you then set when you build the blueprint. Let me show you what I mean. Right now, I've got a build I just threw together. I just built it for an example. Let's take a blueprint of it. All right, so we're used to this dialogue here. We can create the blueprint if we wish, or we can parameterize it. That's what this button here does. As you can see, it's got that little purple thing on it. Let me click on it. Here, we can see what's possible to be parameterized. Right now, it's just this one recipe. And if we mouse over it, we can see that it's being used in 12 assembling machines. I can give it a name. And now, what I can do is I can click parameter, and it'll replace it with that purple thing we saw over here, but with a number on it. This is essentially the zeroth parameter. So, let's just click check. And now, all of these things get replaced with a zero. If I create the blueprint now, and there it is in the inventory. Right now, it's a parameter that hasn't been set. The time it gets set is when you build it. So if I click, aha, we now have a dialog show up and say, my recipe thing. And I can pick whatever I'd like, and it'll become that thing. Let's say I have two recipes. I can do that again, parameterize, and as you can see, I now have two parameters. Parameter, parameter, check, and now you can see these become parameter zero, and these become parameter one. If I create the blueprint, instantiate it, and now I have a new dialog. These are the two recipes I had earlier. I can click on this, and it'll become the top one. And I can click on this, and it'll become the bottom one. It'll even show you over here what's happening as you change them. I click OK, and then boom. Nice. We can also parameterize circuit conditions. To show you, I'll hook these up with green wire. I'll select the inserter, and I'll set it to be enabled or disabled by the circuit condition here. 
We'll set it to gears and see if it's less than, oh, say 300. Now, if I take a blueprint of this and then I hit parameterize, I have the two things from the circuit condition, the gears and the number. Now, if I set these as parameters and I place it, you can see I have the two dialog options here. So I could say iron sticks and 200. And we can see if I click here, it's iron sticks less than 200. Cool. Here are some more details about the system. First off, it's going to try to smush things together as often as it can. So for example, if I put down an assembling machine and I set this to gears, this has a filter of gears and I can even give this a logistic filter of gears for the storage chest. Now when I parameterize it, I only have one instance of a gear in the parameters options. You can see when I mouse over it, it's capturing the recipe, the value in the storage chest, and the gear from the circuit condition on the inserter earlier. Here I got the 300 from the circuit condition, and I actually have a number one here. This is sort of an artifact of what's happening under the hood. I guess it's requesting one gear. I'm not entirely sure. So let's name these. There we go. Turn this and this into a parameter, and just forget about this, it'll be fine. Hit check, create, and if I place it, you'll notice I have exactly what we had before. Setting it to barrel means the assembling machine is crafting a barrel. The circuit condition has been set to barrel. And the logistic filter on the storage chest has been set to barrel too. So that's cool, but there are some weird consequences about Factorio's zeal in smushing all that stuff together. To show you, I've got another setup. It looks very similar, but it's different recipes. The thing to note is that if I click on this, you can see this is less than zero, and this is greater than or equal to zero. Now these two things may not be related. I don't know why these would be zero, I just made a number up. Let's just say for the sake of example that I have these two setups and they both use the number zero, but otherwise they are not related. There's no coupling between these two values. Now, if I take a blueprint of this and I try to parameterize it, well, it smushed the three things together for the copper wire. It smushed the three things together for the sticks, that's fine, but it also smushed the zeros together. They are now coupled and there's no way to change them back. So how do I get around that? Well, the answer is I just temporarily use different numbers when I make the blueprint. So for here, I click on this. Right now it's set to zero. I might set this to say three, set constant, and boom, now it's three. When I go to make my blueprint, and I parameterize it, as you can see, it split the values apart. We've got the three here and the zero here. Let's just reorder this a bit. So when I go to name it, and while it's true, ordering it this way makes it more convenient when I see the dialog option, this will have an important consequence in the next section. So just keep it in mind that we can change the order of these things. Now let's just set these as parameters. Hit check, create blueprint, and there we go. Two and one. Okay, very good. In this example, we're going to see that order matters. There's no special circuit conditions. What you're seeing is what it is. If I take a blueprint of it, and I parameterize it, you can see I have two things I can parameterize. If I make these parameters though, it's then going to give me the option to make them the ingredient of something else. If I click on this, there's nothing for it to be an ingredient of. But if I click on this, it says it could be an ingredient of whatever the recipe for parameter zero will be when I build it. Now, why is that? This is sort of like the order in which things get declared in programming. Things lower down depend on things higher up. So if I want to make this the ingredient of something, I have to have something for it to be an ingredient of above it. Here, I can pick zero, and I can name this. There we go. Now, watch what happens if I reorder this. It won't let me do it. It says parameter one is used, but it's not available at this position. If we put this back, it gets fixed. There is, however, a bug. If I click Create Blueprint, and I place this, it only gives me the recipe for this thing. I guess it gets confused. I am pretty sure this is a known bug. It could be working as intended, and maybe I just don't understand it, but honestly, I'm not entirely sure either way. Just want to reiterate that this is a system that while it's been developed, I have a feeling that this is something that may change. It's just a sense, no one's told me anything, there's nothing official here, just, that's my thought. Okay, so to end this out, let's go over a really cool example that will show us the last major part of this, that is to say, variables I can use in parameters when I'm parameterizing them with circuit conditions. Let's set one up. Oh, uh, sorry, I probably shouldn't be using this. Let's, uh, let's pick something more reasonable. Okay, that's better. 
Let's say I wanted to have a manufacturing area for this. Let's say I might like to have all of these in one area. I'm going to use a storage chest, set its filter to radars. And now any radar that needs to get stored will get stored here. At least only radars will go in here. I suppose that's a better way of phrasing it. At any rate, I might like to have, say, three stacks of these. Maybe I have a large base. To do this properly, I'll use the circuit condition to have this thing only put stuff into the chest when there's less than 150 in here. So I click on this, enable disable, radar, less than 150. And to be precise, I could set this to less than or equal to. But let's say I want to use this design pattern for different things. Maybe things that don't just stack to 50. Maybe I want to have three stacks in general, and that stack size might change from item to item. What could I do? Well, it turns out that you can use parameters for this. So let's go into here, use the blueprint, parameterize, and as you can see, I have three values here. Let's go ahead and name them, recipe. This value here is the one used in storage chests. Again, it reflects something going on under the hood that I don't really understand. However, for reasons that will become clear in a moment, this is going to be num stacks. And this won't need a name. You'll see why in a moment. Let's set these as parameters. And if you look here, I can actually take this numerical value and make it a variable. Let me name it x. Now I can use this parameter in anything that comes later. Like I said in the last section, order matters. Now, let's remember what this 150 is. Right now, this 150 is just used for the circuit condition to make sure the inserter doesn't overfill the chest. What I wanna do is I'm gonna make it a parameter, and now I'm going to make it a formula parameter. This allows me to use expressions and variables in order to come up with a number that'll be used automatically. Let me click, and now, ooh, look at this. We have stuff we can use, available variables. Now I'm not entirely sure what those item counts are. I'm going to go ahead and guess that that's something to do with the fact that the radar here is both an item and a recipe. But that being said, two of the variable names jump out at me, the stack size and the number from above, x. Let's just type that in, p0 underscore s times x. You can see when I have the variable name typed correctly, it goes from being red, it goes from being red to white, times x. And now if I hit check mark, Watch what happens. I'll create the blueprint. I'll place this down. I'll say recipe, oh, I don't know. Let's do red bullets. Number of stacks, let's say four. Hit check. And now it set the logistic filter correctly. It set the recipe correctly. And the circuit condition got set correctly. Piercing rounds magazine is here and that's 400. Remember, this thing stacks up to 100. You can see it in the tooltip there, it says stack size 100. That is incredible. That's gonna wrap it up for this video. There are probably some more things that I've missed, but I'll make sure to sweep those up as I make future videos. If you wanna support me making this content, please check out my links in the description for both my Twitch, which I'm streaming every single day right now, my Discord, where we try to build each other up and make cool stuff, and my Patreon. Thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next one. <sighs> Man, I am hungry. I really wish someone would like invent fishing for this game. Be nice to catch one of these fish. Like I can grab this one. Probably this one. Maybe this one. Nope, can't reach. All right, well, I tell you what, I'm an engineer and uh, we solved fishing poles in a much better way. Get wrecked. <laughs>